Hello, my dear church boys, and welcome back to yet another episode of St. Robert's Day Game and Dating Podcast. And this time I have a guest who I've had on several times before. He's a very, very good day gamer. And well, uh, why am I having him on again? Because uh, I've realized that the most of the interviews I do are either students shortly after I've coached them when they've gotten their first few day game lays about the story. Okay, how did you get started? How did you get your first lays? Or I do them around when when a guy has uh, hit the 30 day game lay mark where you can say, okay, this guy knows what he's doing. This guy is good. But these interviews only show you a partial picture, only a small, small part of the journey. Because yes, okay, beginner getting his first lays, he will have some insights. It's interesting to listen to his story, but he's not going to be able to share maybe great advice. And then a guy who is getting, who got, uh, who, who's gotten to who's got to having 30 day game lays. Yes, okay, he will have some pretty good advice. You can actually learn quite a bit from these guys. But there is a difference between a beginner than a good day gamer who is, let's say, 30 day game lays, and then the same guy a few years later when he has kept learning, kept going out. And then these guys see a much broader picture of day game and dating in general. And I think having conversations with guys at that point about their whole journey and how now after everything they they've done they see the big picture and what you can learn from that i think that is much much more valuable so i've decided to do a series of podcasts where i'm going to be interviewing uh, very very good day gamers high level guys about their whole journey not just about how they learn structured game which is a very important part of day game very oftentimes for most guys as it was for me that's the most important part but we're also going to look at okay how they started how they learned structured game but also how they moved beyond that and what other things they did in their life and game to take their results in dating to an even even higher level and i think this is a very important topic to talk about so you can look at what they did at what their experience and uh, uh, at their experiences and you'll see some things that maybe you're not doing you're skipping uh, and understand why you're still struggling to get results with women in day game and the reason i wanted to do these interviews because uh, you hear a lot of stories about guys who are technically doing everything correct you know they've learned fundamentals of structured game okay their their game is not perfect but you know the fundamentals but still they're struggling very hard like they're doing the right stops and stacks and storytelling and all the attraction material but still they're not getting many many results and why are they struggling well it's actually much more interesting than you might think it's because while structured game is a very important part of game for me that was the most important part it was the missing part for many guys that i know that was the missing part but to become very good at day game and very good in, in dating in general, you need much more than just structured game. What happened around 10 years ago when, when you know, a bunch of guys in London started talking about what they're doing on the street and they created the London day game model, which, as you know, is a very structured approach to learning day game. And this was... You know, before that, people were going out on the streets and doing crazy stuff that they would normally do in nightclubs and peacocking and, you know, just being yourself and, and you know, doing all these things that we know didn't work. They were like the com complete kind of crazy end of the spectrum of shit that doesn't work. Well, now, around 10 years ago, London Day Game Model is, is introduced and... It's a much more structured way, so guys like it. Some finally, there's a language that guys are understanding, you know, structure, models, systems, lines. And the more guys start doing it, the more structured it sort of became. And there were people, including myself, saying that very structured game is the way to go and it's great. And I still agree with that. But what happened over the years is we went from one extreme to another extreme. We went to a point where guys think that all they have to do is to learn to the right things to say and the right lines and the right stacks and the right stories. And they'll be doing great with women, which simply is not true. 
And I gave it a lot of thought. I, I, I was trying to figure out, okay, what are the other things men need to do good with women? What are the other factors? And I looked at the guys that I know from the community and the guys I've coached and the guys that do good and the guys that do bad. And well, after more than half a decade of coaching, I realized that there are five main pillars of day game. And the more of these pillars you have going for you, the better you'll be doing. Whereas if you have just one structured game or, you know, maybe two, like, it's going to be much, much harder. And those pillars are, number one, looks, more specifically, your style and grooming. The number two would be structured game, what, what, you know, you've been learning and what I've been teaching for a long time. But pillar number three is... Surprise, surprise, natural game. We're not talking about be yourself and walk with girls and do all of this nonsense that guys do. No, but we're talking about the ability to maybe move away from copy-paste lines, not using them as much, being able to talk about any topic that comes up. At some point, that becomes important as well. Not in the beginning, but at some point. Um, and then uh, pillar number four is living a happy life. Because if you're a very depressed person whose life is just office, gym, home, maybe not even gym, just office, home, office, home, and you're deeply unhappy, game is just not gonna work with you because, well, who wants to date people like that? So you have to work on that as well. There are different parts you have to figure out. And number five is location, day gaming in the right places. So, now we're going to talk with Mr. Majestic, a guy who has been on my podcast episode several times before, and we're going to look at his whole day game journey from how, from how he started, and he had a very slow start, to where he is now, and now he's a very good day gamer who has been doing very good in different parts of the world, and we're going to look at how has he been working with all of these pillars, or more specifically, at four of these five pillars to get better results in day game. This was a very interesting interesting conversation that you will learn a lot from if you are stuck in day game and if you day game and if you're trying to understand okay what should i focus on next before we jump into the conversation a few quick updates about coaching spots etc mid-april i'm heading to japan where i will have one coaching spot available if you are in asia then mid-may i'm heading back to europe the first uh, coaching spots in the next season the spring summer season in europe have already been booked so if you are in europe and you want to learn day game with me in the best locations in Europe, then there's a link in the description where you will find out everything about coaching, how coaching usually works, the typical pricing packages, and everything else. Go through all the information, and if everything sounds nice, fill the form there, and we will hop on a WhatsApp call to talk about the cities we could do this in, and other details. But if instead of learning everything you need to know in one to two weeks of infill coaching, you prefer to learn a little bit slower, then, well, you can join our online coaching program and community where I will listen to your sets, tell you what exactly your mistakes are, how exactly you should fix them, give you a bunch of homework where you'll go out and start fixing those mistakes step by step. You'll be learning from a bunch of material that's not available on YouTube or anywhere else. It's only available for the members of online coaching community. Uh, so all the details about that are also in the link in the description. And lastly, if you're going out and you're getting numbers and you want to improve your texting so more of those numbers turn into dates then head over to daygamecourses.com to get access to my free texting courses and if you are going on dates but then and you want to improve what you're doing on dates if you want to learn what to do better so more of those dates would end well at your place then again head over to daygamecourses.com to check out my free dating guide there and now let's jump into the conversation with mr majestic and by the way as usually when i have guests on my podcast when I'm talking to other day gamers. This interview is audio only. There is no video to preserve the privacy of my guest. So feel free to listen to this uh, for an audio only version also on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever is more convenient for you. And we're here with Mr. Majestic. And um, dear Mr. Majestic, uh, let's, let's start with giving guys who have never heard you before on my podcast, let's start with giving them like a good idea of who you are. So a bit of your background information, how old you are, what do you do, you know, anything you want to share. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. I'm 29 years old. I am from India, but I am an expat in the Middle East, basically in a very famous country in the Middle East, you know. But a lot of tall buildings, a lot of development. 
and uh, <laughs> and a lot of uh, honey babes as well, you know. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm a body transformation coach, more of like a body transformation specialist because that's my niche. And yeah, that accounting and finance graduate, I basically joined. Uh, I basically got into day game in the golden golden era of day game, if that makes perfect sense, which is... Wait, 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 wait. wait. Where was the golden era of day game? <laughs> yeah, so a lot, a lot of people think that the golden era of day game is like, uh, you know, 2010, 2012, where everybody was like uh, thinking, you learn the model and you, you get the girl, you know, but the, I personally think that the golden era of day game is uh, 2016, 2017, 2018, and 2019, where uh, people began to evolve from... Um, fucking beard was to like legit cool guys who were not freaking girls into their bed you know so i think so i entered the scene around that time if that makes sense yeah okay that's what I, yeah yeah i personally think sense. Okay. that's when the golden era of day game was when people became more ethical you know i i think most people still are unethical you go on youtube you see the amount of infields and it's just stupid like it's just disgusting that should be illegal youtube youtube should be panning all of that shit that's this is ridiculous but but yeah, yeah. now the, the thing that has happened now and what happened around actually maybe i would say later than 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 when you started that actually started to happen maybe maybe like four years ago was when a lot of really cool dudes started seeing day game as not something that only crazy pickup artists do and they started doing it with a very different approach just as you said with a much more ethical approach to day game but yeah but i think that that period is actually just starting now because yeah because uh, in the pickup world i think day game is declining Whereas in in this okay the you know, the the real the, the world of cool guys let's call it like that yeah I think there there it's just really gaining traction now that's that's very interesting but anyway so you you enter day game so that's more than ten years more more than ten years ago is what you're saying or no well, like uh, five years ago to be honest five years ago I, that's when I actually started and uh, I mean. I was just dabbling into it, in and out of it, you know, because obviously you, you, your head is so far stuck up your ass with approach anxiety and all of that, you know, and you're scared, you don't have your shit together. But then I, I really started practicing it like it was like a, like it was like going to the gym when uh, lockdown happened. Because I read one of your posts, you know, in the chat basically back in the day, that um, if you start practicing right now, you're be, you basically are an OG of the game. And I was like, wow, this is so cool. I'd love to be an OG, you know. Um, <laughs> so uh yeah i basically went to the nearby uh, sports shop uh, you know and yeah did like my first or second approach by myself because before that i was uh, dabbling amongst the local pickup group in the country where i'm situated and it was built, it was filled with a bunch of fucking weirdos uh, <laughs> it's usually the case yeah <laughs> we, we uh, so one bit and they would just uh, talk about the dumbest shit you know which was inner game meditation while we are gaming i'm like you guys are stupid, you know. So, yeah, I disconnected from that pretty quick. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Of course, nothing wrong with with meditation, all that shit. But if you're using that as a way to kind of get better in day game, that 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 doesn't really work. That's that's yeah. That's that's an old conversation. How was your dating life back then before you really learned day game? Um, my dating life. So in university, I used to be a bit of a how do I say it? Like a bit of a player. But then it was, how do I say, the quality was horrible, awful, you know, <laughs> like awful is an understatement. And then I, I don't like using the term red pill, blue pill, but I'll use it over here because it's hard for me to conceptualize stuff like the way red pill and blue pill actually conceptualizes things, you know. So I, I was more of like a blue pill player in university, like, you know, the type of player you see in American Pie, you know, uh, like a stifler, you know. Um, <laughs> like a cheesy player, if that makes sense. In one of the room, yeah, room but that, that stuff works in university, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I was that kind of player basically, and then I actually found someone. I got in a relationship with her, and then she broke up. I started stress eating. I started binging. I started drinking a lot. I started doing a lot of substances, and I swelled up. I became a fat fuck, you know. So. That was uh, where my entire identity as a player basically shat shattered. And that's when I, how do I say it? Like, in every player's life, there's at least one girl who takes 
uh, who chops his ball and takes it away. I don't know if he yeah. was like, oh, you know, so that's what happened to me. I lost all my game, my blue pool game, my charm, etc. And that's when I start like needed to relearn this stuff in an artificial way with the lines and all of that, you know. So uh, how my- how were you doing when you started when you started day gaming? What were your day game gonna? Uh, how were your sessions? How what were your results? Oh yeah, yeah. okay. So um, it w- it was a funny thing. I mean, I'm gonna answer the question, but it was a funny thing. I got my heart broken by another girl around this time, and I was just waiting for the public bus whilst I was on my way back home, and I was searching how to talk to girls on YouTube, came through Rush's podcast, which led to Tom Terrero's podcast, and I was like, whoa, this works. So the first approach I did, legit the first approach I did, I got a same-day kiss on that particular day. Yeah, it was obviously with the four. With the four. I mean, I don't like to give numbers to, to a girl, basically. Yeah, but... Let's not do numbers. Let's not do numbers. A girl that you wouldn't approach now, let's let's yeah. say that. Okay, my bad. Yeah, a girl that I wouldn't approach right now. So I got a, I got a kiss. I'm like, whoa, th- this stuff actually works, you know? And, uh, and, and like, whether it's for the girl whom you're not going to approach right now, whether it's a hottie whom you're going to approach right now, if you get results pretty quickly, like, it says that you're probably... It, it speaks that you're probably made for it, in my opinion, because most of the beginner day gamers, whether they're good looking, whether they're not good looking, whether they're charming, whether they're not, they're not charming, you know, if they get like initial success pretty easily with like shit structure, it's it speaks something about them, in my opinion, you know. Um, so that, that's what I personally thought. I'm like, okay, let me just stick with this. And uh, things just started getting better and better after that, you know. So whatever I used to listen on the podcast, I would just go and apply it. Uh, because for me, I would always take action first, and I would be really shit with the theory. Even when I took coaching calls with you, I mean, taking yeah. action was never really a problem. We'll get we'll get to the coaching calls. We get to the coaching calls. Because yeah. <laughs> the story from my side and how you started was so we used to have this this group chat, which we started with just my closest buddies in WhatsApp, and then kind of it we moved it to Telegram because it just became too big, and then we had like hundreds of guys. There was really quality stuff for like a few years before I turned to the shit in you know, the last year, and now it doesn't really like it's not a thing anymore. I'm actually shutting it down very soon, uh, probably. Anyways, that's not the topic of the conversation. But so, and then you join the chat. And uh, I remember like sometimes in a chat, in a group chat, you have guys that that ask a question and then uh, they ask the same question two weeks later. <laughs> yeah. And people give really good advice and they ask the same question two weeks again, later again. So... And and so I remember that like, I remember seeing you in a group chat, and and you were basically the guy who asked the same dumb questions over and over again, and people yeah. kept giving you really really good advice. And this, I, I don't know whether you were not Im- implementing that advice or or, but but basically you were that guy in a group chat. But I thought, okay, like. And I was at some points. I was like, "Should I fucking ban him?" Because I I really don't like that. And we recently, when the chat was still active, we had one more guy like that, but they ended up ban- banning him later because <laughs> he he was just not learning. But yeah. but yeah. what happened with you? I think I gave you like one or two re- very strict kind of hey, dude. Yeah, it's time to start doing shit because this this is what you're doing. It's not working. Like you know, it's time to level up. And I don't know whether you reacted to that or or, but then and, and you were also someone who was like I always told you, dude. Like with what you're doing, you you got to start doing coaching calls or at least something. And and you always ignored that. You know, there are people who try to do everything on their own. And there's nothing wrong with that, but but you have to kind of decide how long am I gonna keep banging my head against the wall. Like set a deadline and then realize, okay, I tried this for, you know, X X number of months, X number of approaches, and it's not working. It's time to kind of understand that I'm not gonna make it on my own. Yeah. And at one moment, you just you just changed. You just you just sent me a message and and you basically asked for a coaching call. And and we started we started doing calls with you. Yeah. Uh, but let me also, I'm interested in starting with that. Now we, we understand where you were before, how you started, but, but then we started working together and then all of a sudden your attitude in the chat, ch- chat changed and you started taking advice that people were giving you and it, you started improving very fast, but, 
but I want to understand what was that click that happened in your in your mind? Was it about, hey, okay, I'm going to start doing coaching calls? Was it about the attitude towards life in general? Or or was yeah. it, I don't know, just grabbing life by the balls? Or or what, what happened? By the horns, man. No. By the horns, like Tom Ferrero used to say. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, no. so uh, with regards to me asking questions, uh, I still have that same attitude because, you know, I'd rather be foolish and stupid, you know, than uh, not know, you know, because, yeah, like I still do that in other fields, basically. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I probably still do that. And I would advise everybody to do so, but don't be an asshole like me basically but yeah just don't hesitate to ask questions but uh yeah uh, yeah i'm i'm also going to clarify this ask the dumbest questions you have but take the advice people give you that's the important part yeah so the thing that was not working out for me uh, i'm going to come to you when it all click but the thing that was not working out for me was you tend to you, you know when you flood with so much information from uh, different people you know and when you're like in the set you just get like a brain freeze basically so that was actually happening to me so it takes some time for you to just like sit down and understand the information on an emotional level, not on a logical level, you know. Otherwise, uh, if we all understood things logically, like everybody would be a shredded billionaire with like three sums every day. But uh, uh, nope. So I kept on going out. I like, and I would be a few would have this attitude, but I, I'd not have expect like the. I'd not be entitled to the results. Basically, I'd really not be entitled to the results. I'm like, whoa, if I can get like a lay out of a girl whom I wouldn't approach right now, that's a win for me. So uh, I genuinely love the process. Um, and I, I, I would keep on listening to podcasts from people all over. So from you and the other guys, basically, and I'd implement the free stuff. And yes, obviously, you run a coaching business, you know, there's a call to action, basically. But then it's a legitimate call to action. You're genuinely helping people, you know. You, you would give advice and even the free advice would work and it's 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 not nothing new it's just obvious common sense but guys guys are fools they just don't know how to talk you know they're not socially socially calibrated i used to be one of them and uh yeah eventually i was like man if if i if i want to you you said one thing that you, do you want to trade time for money or money for time and that really really hit me i like fuck it now nah, I, I like i I can't, I can't waste a lot of time so yeah, I think the first call that I hopped on with you, um, I immediately put those actions into implement. I immediately put that advice into implementation, into action, and uh, yeah, I started getting far more positive responses. I'm like, well, okay, cool. Let's probably do that for the next hundred sets. Let's probably do that for the next two hundred sets. I'm like, okay, now I need to adapt. You know, so the the more I started investing, the more results I saw, and that fear of spending money that basically went away. I'm like, nah, this guy's actually helping me save time. You know, and uh, and through day game, basically, I was like, I need to travel because of which I quit my job as a personal trainer. I started my own coaching business, which where I'm doing pretty well right now. That's what. And yeah, and then when you're when you're working with a lot of people, when you're helping a lot of people, because I help a lot of people, you you gotta have a far more positive outlook on life. You can't be a negative uh, red pill gamma who is. Uh, Thinking whether he's an alpha, gamma, or a beta, you know whether he's. You know, <laughs> you can't, I don't you can't even know what they mean, man. <laughs> yeah, you you can't meet that sort of a neo Nazi, you know, who's uh, blasting other people on his fucking blog, you know. Uh, you and then I was like, no, man, people are not here to cut you off, you know. People are actually really nice. Girls are actually really nice as well. So uh, after breaking a couple of parts, after going through a couple of days, after like quitting my job, the positive outlook in life eventually built up basically if that makes perfect sense it was not an overnight thing yeah. so you're saying that one thing that changed was uh your attitude towards people whereas if i I'm, I'm trying to understand whether i understood this correctly or not That's, i'm not saying this is what yeah. you did i'm just asking so you you understood that people aren't out to get you. They're they're like girls are nice, and and if if some people look like they can help you, they can help you. So people aren't out to get you. They're actually like your, your attitude towards people changed. Did I understand it correctly? Or yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because when I was a personal trainer as well, my main job is to transform people. I used to work in one of the biggest companies where we were evaluated on transforming people. Uh, I read in the blog. You got to read this book, Forty Eight Laws of Power. I read that book, man. It, it, I mean, it's an it's an amazing book. Every gamer should read it. Read it. But then, uh, 
like when I would when I would game and I would approach clients with that mindset, I would feel like absolute. You feel so negative towards people. You actually hate people. You know, it's like the Red Bull version of uh, dealing with people. It's like the rational male version of dealing with people. You know. Um, yeah, I've heard about the book, but every time I kind of listen to anything that guy says, I've seen some YouTube shorts with him. Every time I, I hear his advice, I'm thinking, yeah, technically that would work, but you're a piece of shit if you're doing that. Like, and that's it. Yeah. Uh, so, so when you, when you, when you changed your attitude, okay. So one thing you started doing, you started doing coaching calls. Uh, was it the first thing you did or so which came first? Starting to do the coaching calls or changing your attitude towards people. Coaching calls, man. Co coaching calls. Okay. Yeah. Coaching calls in the game world. Coaching calls because uh, I was gaming in a. I was gaming whilst I was working a very social job, and me personally being like, it, it's not going to sound like, it's not going to seem like it from the way I speak right now. But I'm actually an introvert, basically, like introvert, obsessive. I mean, that that's my type, basically. That's who I am. So me being that kind of person, and I was working in a personal training job where my main job was to transform people. So I, it was a very social job. And around that time, I um, became a day gamer, basically. So both of them are happening at the same time. So I was reading books on how to win friends and influence people, 48 Laws of Power. And at the same time, I was approaching, like I was entering day game. So they happened simultaneously. But if you were to choose between one game, helped me become more social in every area of my life. So the okay. coaching all actually and, really helped. Yeah. And I also know that. I remember that uh, you did change the way you look. You went into this image of this, this, this dude with tattoos, and and you you yeah. got a bunch of ink done. And uh, when when was this happening on a timeline? Yeah, so uh, it happened gradually because uh, how do I say? It? Like game game or seduction or pickup, etc., helps you cut through all the bullshit that you accumulated over the years. So. Um, I always enjoyed listening to heavy metal music. I like Led Zeppelin, Metallica. Like that—that's my kind of music. You know, so uh, it started off with me getting—I don't know what was that? Like finger tattoos. I was in, in Goa. Goa is more of like an area in India, which is like the Miami of India, basically. A lot of Russians over there. So I was like, "Wow!" Turner said on one of his podcasts, "You know, get drunk, get fucked up, and get get tattoos done." And I was just walking by a tattoo shop. I'm like, "You know what? Let's go and get a finger tattoo done." It was like on the spot. You know. And then over time, as I became a better day gamer, as I started finding out more about myself, uh, I started getting more and more tattoos because I actually l liked it. It was not for chicks. Yes, the chicks are of course. Um, but yeah, it just got better over a given period of time. And fast forward four years later, I've got like 11 tattoos. So, yeah. Okay. Did anything else change in your looks, your style, or or I don't know any like piercings or anything? Or yeah, um, I, I I would always keep on experimenting with my style, but then um, the one where I would feel most comfortable with was when I would dress up like a bit of a lumberjack sort of guy. Um, and yeah, but I didn't stumble upon. I, I was getting good enough success with with like moderate style by doing things by myself, but then till I took professional help which we're going to get to, um, you know, things then click. So, yeah. So the professional help is working with Anna or? With Anna, with Anna. So um, th that that's like the finishing touch, basically. And I'd probably tell everybody, <laughs> like, tighten up your game really, really well, you know, like, like nail the model down to a T and at the same time get a cool life, you know. Don't think that fixing your style is going to get you late. It's going to help you. It's like... Uh, putting a nose in a car it's like the nitro's boost yeah but first build a better engine yeah yeah you definitely you're gonna start with with so you started with basically you started with learning structured game during coaching calls where we were going over your sets and then every time i was saying okay like focus on these mistakes do this do that you would go out you would improve those things and then a month or so later we would hop on another call with with new recordings and we would look for the next things to improve that was the that was the first thing you did. If we look at kind of other things you did, so fixing your looks, focusing away from maybe going away from structured game to more natural game where you're improvising more and then living a happy life or where you're kind of building a fuller life. Um, what was the next thing you did after structured game? Okay, so the next thing after learning structured game was 
so okay um wait okay this is such a complicated question but okay so i, I started getting a uh, knack of the structure in in the third year like where i really had it down to a t and i basically hit like a bit of a ceiling and around that time i basically attracted the hottest girl that i've ever been that i, I would be like back then will could ever attract you know and but then around that time i went to russia for the first time after getting covid so and i was like whoa you know there's a whole new life that exists so me quitting my job basically boosted my game up to another level i don't know how it did that because i have no clue how it did that but when, when you quit your job you grow a pair of balls you know um i have no clue how but i got the masculine gravitas i mean I got those guts, etc., and that boosted up my game to another level. I started taking action more, far more fearlessly. Um, and yeah, that, does, does that answer your question? Or what, what was so? The question? So first was structured game, and then the second was kind of saying, "Okay, fuck this! I don't want to do this for a living. I want to build my own thing." You quit your yeah. job. Uh, I remember you. You were doing a lot of work, you know, to kind of be to be able to quit your job and start doing your own thing. And then the yeah. second thing, basically, you did was you changed other things in your life. You started taking day game trips. You change. You quit your job. So, so that was the second thing, right? Yeah. Okay. So yeah. yeah. So um, if you want to conceptualize it, the first, I basically, I basically got good in game. I got good, good at game all four years. The first three years were just literally spent drilling the structure. You know, in the second and the third year, basically, there was an upper ceiling. I was like, oh, sh you know, this is only how far I can possibly go with structure. And in the second and no, in the fourth and the fifth year, I started reading more self-help books. I started meditating more. I started looking at myself more from the inside. I started trying to become a nice. I, I consciously focused on becoming a nice, nicer person. Uh, read some mm -hmm. inner game books, you know, um, and then worked in my style, you know, try to try to have an interesting life. And this was not done from a perspective of getting girls. This was strictly not done from a perspective of getting girls. This was just done from a perspective of being far more at peace with myself. So that's what took my game up to another level. So you were doing it to become a better person, to to, to be enjoying your life more, but at the same time that, that gave you, if I'm hearing this correctly, correct me if I understand anything wrong, but this was one of the big things that also gave you much better results, kind of dealing with, making turning your life into something that or totally turning your personality and your life into something that you enjoy much more yeah yeah 100 percent. and I, I think so you also probably been through this because you came from the pickup scene and you did you did go through a phase where you were not really a nice person you know i was not no man i was i was Dude, the shit I've done when day gaming, I've broken some hearts, and, and I, I all but but I always had one thing that I did out of ethics. If I was with a girl who's a virgin, and she seemed very naive, I would not sleep with her yep. before explaining what's up. That that listen, we're not gonna be in a relationship and that definitely lost but this was one thing that i always did even even in the period where i was the the biggest fuck boy like i i have had my fuck boy periods and and i've done that i've done dumb shit i still sometimes think about it back back about it right now and i'm like shit I, I i you know i could be friends with those people i could just be friends with those chicks like like why would i do anything that dumb that rude it's just such a fog boy thing and then it's yeah you get the lay but but you can but the thing is you can't it's it's come if you are in the the day game bubble in the world yeah in the back back then the content was the whole bubble was kind of if you are not like this if you are trying to improve your personality and day game ethically there was this term called purple pill yeah, yeah. it was red pill was good and purple pill was basically you're pretending you're nice you're you're, you're actually blue pill who is pretending he's red it was, it was like derogative it was People yes. thought you are just completely stupid if you were if you were not being a complete dick to women and not always, but there are like a lot of de dick moves that that day gamers pull and and that I was doing all of them and and of course they worked and especially you know what's one of the big dick moves 
all the pulling shit that people do on dates, kind of pulling, push, oh, sorry, pushing, the, the pushes that people do, they were they pushing the girl away. I think it's absolutely unne- unnecessary yeah. in like, like yeah, there yeah. are very rare cases with very specific types of girls where you need to do that. But that's like 1% of all girls would, would will really kind of, you will need anything like that with 1% of girls. With all the other girls, you're just being an asshole who doesn't know how to get laid. And then you're doing some, it's basically just as dumb as negging was in night game, you know, where yeah, people yeah. were just gonna, yeah, it's, it's just as rude. You don't need that. And, but the thing is, it's very hard to understand. So what do you need? And then the problem here is, which I explained in the intro, well, I will record the intro and explain this, why we're having this conversation is that we have come to this extreme of, of people believing believing that all you need is structured game and then everything will be great. You just need to know which buttons to push, what to say, and what to do. Uh, uh, but but that you you will hit a wall where where yeah. you can't get through to some like some girls will see through that they will not like you. But yeah, if yeah. you fix these other things that we're talking about, you become such an amazing dude that if you use it together with structured game. You're unstoppable. Yeah, yeah. You can you can sleep with girls that would never sleep with never ne- would ne- you would have maybe slept with them before, but you would have to go through a lot of resistance. Whereas now they would just happily bang your brains out, you know. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, and believe it or not, you know, like I, I think so. At the end of the like in the first three years, you know, of my game, basically there was this girl with whom I had a very toxic relationship with, and she was like my one eye just you know technical P O lingo. Uh, two weeks ago, believe it or not, I was just out, you know, shopping after Anna's consultation. I was just trying out new clothes in the mall. I bumped into into my ex, you know, the toxic one. And the first thing I did was, I'm like, you know, you know what? Let's go for coffee. Uh, I apologized, and she's like, I'm, I'm gonna go and buy a dress. So you carry on. I'm like, nah, I'm just gonna go and buy you a dress because I, I would make her spend for my shit basically. Because the pickup at Y would say, oh, she needs to be booking. She needs to be buying you shit, you know. So I've done a lot of work. I've done a lot of horrible shit, but then, um, yeah, just don't do that shit, guys. If you guys are listening to this, just don't we be. We should ass. do a podcast episode about the horrible shit we have done to women uh, yeah, when yeah. trying to get laid, or with regulars, or that would be a hilarious podcast episode. Anyways, I'll think about it. So, okay, so you, I, I, I want to talk about one more thing, or probably more things, but one that I heard you say is you were very focused on structured game, which I remember when we were doing the calls, you were. You were always a guy who was understanding structure. You were able to learn in a very structured way, which is very important. Uh, by the way, I still remember the call we had when you were in... Uh, we either did a call when you were in Russia or we chatted a bit about that because you, you were in the beginning banging your head against the wall and nothing was working, I remember. <laughs> in Russia, we spoke and in Ukraine, as we spoke as well. And then in Russia, yeah. it's only... Uh, you you just said like it, it was my first day game trip and it was a stupid thing to go far of the deep end in Russia, uh, <laughs> but then you just all you told me was uh, uh, majestic against the Russians and uh, yeah and then in Ukraine you told me like uh, you know stop trying to have that my way or highway mentality with them. That's what you told me. Yeah, in Ukraine, you can't do that. They'll see through that. Like, in some ways, you have to do it, but in other ways, you can't. It's a very kind of slippery slope. It's a, it's a very tricky thing. You have to find the right balance. So you you have to, you can't lose the frame. You have to keep leading because, you know, it's going to be very friendly and sometimes you're going to get princessy attitudes. But you can't be overly kind of like too much of a dick and, and it just doesn't work And, and in some cases. Yeah, but anyways, what I wanted to talk about, you said that you were learning structure game and then at one point you realize that okay this is I, I can only get this far with structured game did you did have you done anything to to learn to kind of be more in a moment and improvise with everything that comes up i'm not like uh, let's call it natural game because that's when yeah. i call it in the five pillars of of day game but we're not talking about just be yourself but we are talking about dropping a lot of the lines dropping a lot of the copy paste shit and more kind of improvising with whatever she's giving to you have did you have a period where you were specifically kind of understanding okay this is what right. i need to do now and and how so how did that look well i drank green tea and i meditated and i got in line with my chakras man 
<laughs> no, no, I'm not fucking with you. Uh, so, so like, I, I used to keep like KPIs. You know, I'm, I'm I'm a very nerdy guy, like very geeky, like very logical. Like that's how I started off with you, you know. Um, but so I would keep like KPIs, you know, and my approach to layer ratio was 1.5 to 2 percentage, basically. So, <laughs> so wait, uh, your approach to layer ratio was one. 1.5. So out of every 100 girls I was approaching, I was sleeping with a girl in a tranny. You know? Uh, no, I'm just, I'm just joking. But it was 1.5 to 2 percentage, basically. So, oh, okay. Sleeping. Wait, that is that is basically... So 1.5 1. to 2 percent is what you're saying, your conversion yes. rate. Yeah, so that was Okay, like, so that's, that's, that's like 1 out of 50, 1 out of 60. Yeah. That's, and, it's easier. Yeah, that's that's a good that's a good intermediate conversion rate for a guy who has understood uh, the fundamentals to a very good level. Uh, that, that's that's a good that, that's a very good intermediate guy. Yeah. Yeah, and then um, what happened was, I think this this doesn't feel fun. It feels like a job. And then I was getting like I was like getting a lot of positive responses in sets. You know, like when I was going out having a chat with the girls, basically. But then when they came on, like when they were on text with me, they would either just disappear. And and more often than not, you know, the you go like, she was so on in the set. It's weird that she's disappeared, you know? And yes, I know you're not supposed to say that as a, as a day gamer because anything can happen. But sometimes you learn how to spot the subtle details and you go like, nah, she's going to respond for sure. You know? And then um, I, I was like rigidly sticking to the text uh, texting model which I don't do anymore right now. And uh, like I was having, I was having a chat, like there, there was another chat, uh, there was another gamer from the chat who came, came to me and him just caught up. Uh, and he was like, man, just go and have a chat, you know? And I was like, wow, okay, this makes so much more sense right now. So I went through like a month legit where I would freeze in sets. And this was like a year ago, basically. I would just freeze in sets because I was like, the model was in fact holding me back. It was like pulling me, pull, stopping my results. But then um, I consciously tried to listen to the inner voice, you know, as to, okay, this is what I'm supposed to say. That's, and that will automatically come the more time you spend approaching, you know, and the more I got in alignment with that, the more I spoke my heart out, the more I spoke what I felt, um, the better my sets became. And I've actually noticed right now that if I s- listen more in the sets, my results backfire, but if I speak more, because I like to talk more in my sets, basically, my results are far more better. Because I, but you know, like I'm a far, more, I'm a far better storyteller, and I've got like a shitload of interesting stories, basically. I've got a good voice as well, so my results are actually far more better with that. You know, that that's what happened. And for practical tips, yes, I do practice meditation because I've got a very stressful job. So yeah, for like the esoteric voodoo stuff. You know. So trying to understand that the, the natural game part of of going away from uh, extremely structured game to 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 going more in the stories, were those stories always also structured and copy paste, or or were you coming like was there a part where you were impro- improvising in your game? Yeah, yeah. So my my stories were on the fly, basically from the shit that I've been through in life. So, yeah. Okay, uh, you you started doing that a year ago. You said correct. A year ago, or like a year and a half ago, basically. Yeah. Okay, and uh, how have you seen your game kind of change over that year, year and a half? And how how is the consistency of your results while you're doing this? It's actually pretty good right now. I mean, rarely do I get like blowouts at the moment. Rarely, like not, and the blowouts are not even like, uh, you know, like fuck off, get away. Uh, you know, it's more of like I already, I, I already have a boyfriend, uh, married, engaged in a relationship, blah blah blah, all of that. You know, um, like two years ago, I would have like really negative experiences. In fact, what one of like. Two of them I mentioned in the chat where legit a guy came and caught me by the collar, basically. But uh, yeah, right now the blowouts are far more positive. The reactions are far more positive. And most of the number closer that I do get, they do respond back. So, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a thing that happens when you change your... When you, when you start living a 
happier life and also when your attitude towards women change and and you start gonna you have good structured game but then on top of that you say okay you know like i'm tired it's too too much copy paste i'm just gonna kind of try to flow with it once you switch to that your results do become not just your results the, 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 there's a tricky thing with results that that can happen but the reactions become much better even just as just as you said if you get rejections those rejections are rejections are much more positive much nicer they're very kind of yeah I, I understand but you know I have a blah 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 and so it's it's a very different thing uh, an interesting thing with results that sometimes happens this is why I asked you about consistency but 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 you, you didn't say it so it didn't happen to you but what i've heard is that for some people they go a little bit too natural. <laughs> yeah. They they completely lose the the model. They completely use the structure. And while it has seems very fun, sometimes it kind of goes to like a level where you 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 just stop getting results, and then you have to kind of have to remember, oh wait, there was a structure where I have to work on attraction and then comfort and blah blah blah. So yeah. there is this balance that guys are trying to find between structured and natural game, which which you know you can't go completely natural. I, I don't know many people that do, but 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 that it's it is an important part to kind of go a little bit in that direction. Okay, yeah. now the last thing, let's talk about. Let's talk about your looks because you you started something a little bit, and I know maybe maybe what was your experience with Anna? Because one day you reached out and you say, "Hey, I want to work with with your stylist." Because I've been yeah. working uh, with a stylist for I would say she's been taking care of my style for more than ten years. First, yeah. when she initially changed, because she's an ex from many years ago. Yeah, yeah, and then as I got older, as I changed my career several times, she always kind of helped me, you know, to to change it so that I look appropriate for my age and for what I do for a living. And then she, for the last five, since I started coaching, she's been working with most guys that I coach have had help with her. So, how was your experience with her? Without you know being pitchy or just honest opinion about your experience, that's what I care about. No, like I'm, but by the way, guys, uh, I'm not. I'm not getting paid to say this, you know, I work with Anna and, and it's taken my game to another level right now. After, after I've spent, after I've done my time learning the model, getting a pro rejected a shit ton, after I've done some inner game work, try to become a nicer person, you know, and then I was like, okay, I need to fix my style basically. So what made me fix my style? I was like, I mean, th th there's no upper ceiling to things basically. I mean, yes, if, if you become a cool loot and to gay game, your conversion rate is probably going to be 3%. I was like, let's probably push it up to 5%. Let's probably push it up to 10%. You know, let me just see what happens. Let me just see how far I take it. Uh, the next step was pretty obvious, you know, like fix my looks, basically. I already have a good physique because I'm a trainer, etc. But then um, I was like, let me know what suits because most of the girls that I've been with, they look at small, small details. Like they randomly say, oh, this black shirt looks really good on you. Oh, this looks really good. I'm like, okay, what if I get to the root of things? You know, let me just go to the far and actually figure out what actually suits me. So when I actually did that, um, and I was walking down the mall, legit, I had girls tell me in the sets that uh, your style is really good. And they were like, uh, oh, you're from India, you know? And I'm like, yeah, they're like, you don't look Indian because... People have the stigma or the stereotype, okay, this guy is probably going to look like that nerdy guy from Silicon Oasis, an Indian dude with that funny accent, you know? So you just look Latino or whatever, yeah, that doesn't bother me anymore. So I'm like, well, okay, I've done something right, you know, stuff's working. And yeah, that, 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 and what caused me to reach out was, I was like, let me just see how far I can take it, you know? That basically it's an is an experiment. It. Yeah, I think it's a good experiment once you've figured out the structured game. It's, I think it's a very good next level. By the way, one thing that I wanted to mention to guys is uh, when when we're talking about you and improvising in sets, because uh, you're you're one of the because in in our online coaching program and community, you're one of the advanced members there. And and once in a while, you send me some uh, audio infields that I can. Uh, share with the guys there just so they can kind of learn from okay like this guy's getting good results in day game this is what he's doing and in in the, the interesting part is in some of those sets you're you're doing things that technically shouldn't work like it's just they, they shouldn't work like you should you should you shouldn't be getting those numbers and and, and whatnot yeah but you're getting them and that's a very good example of what happens when you become very good at structured game, but then you change, you add all of these other things. You're 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 living a happier happier life, and and you, your attitude towards women changes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. 
your whole, I don't know, whatever you call it, being becomes such that even you, you don't need a strong of a structured game anymore. You can you don't have to rely on strictly strictly structured game. You you can get away with way more mistakes. And this is what and this is not a bad thing at all that I'm saying. It's a good thing. It's a demonstration of how if you're only working on structured game, you'll need really, really tight game. But if you're doing a bunch of things then then boom, all of a sudden, you know, you, you can just expect way way better results. Even if you're just more relaxed in sets i'm not being a robot or anything and then um yeah what's next in your day game journey let's little let's let's wrap it up with like with that what's your next experiment what's your next trip yeah so i'm um from right now i am going to be either going to russia or belarus but getting a visa for belarus is a pain in the ass even though that's the only place where people from my country can go easily at the moment so i'm confused between that you know and I'd like to push my finances up, so not so that I can flaunt in front of the girls, because even when I go out on dates, I wear a Casio F91W on dates, you know, just to filter out the gold diggers in the country where I live. Yeah. Um, but yeah, every I, I don't know, have, have you experimented with taking girls out on nice, into nice places? Without giving the, um, without giving the provider? I... I do that in cheap places, like let's say if I'm in Latin America, I'll go to a place that I like, that that place will most likely be considered a very fancy place for their standards. Yep. Uh, I will still not do dinners or anything like that. I just, you know, I don't, I don't enjoy dinner dates, so I, I don't think I've done many of them, or even if any, <laughs> maybe in, yeah. maybe none. I don't know. But yeah, in in places like that, I'll do it. Um, but those are not places known for for having a lot of women who will try to get something from you. So if you are in a place that that's very very known for women to kind of looking at you and thinking okay what can i get from this guy like is there you know like kind of the sugar baby attitude yeah. if if people are in a place like that i would be extremely careful with that but if you go to other locations i have i have zero problems with that the places yeah. where i wouldn't do that would be i would be careful who i take to a really nice place in in ukraine and russia but yeah, in, in Ukraine as well, I was going to really nice places and I never had any problems with that because I just like those places and I just, I felt more comfortable there. I think if you are at a very good level, you can, you can go to these places and get away with it. But I, I would not suggest doing that in your city, unfortunately, where yeah, you yeah, live 100%. currently. In my city, I take them to uh, the scruffiest place ever. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, okay. well, dude, I... yeah. Sorry. With, with regards to that, like, what's next for me was uh, like I want to, I want to like really get like financially literate. Um, I want to plan out my retirement. That's the first things first because I like to have fun. Uh, second thing is I'm soon opening up a watch business, as you and I actually spoke about. And yeah, I'd like to learn how to fight a little bit more because I've just been way too stuck up in bodybuilding. I don't know. You, you fight a lot, you know, and. Uh, like what's the obviously you don't do it for the girls and neither do i do it but then when go, girls actually find out you do brazilian jiu-jitsu like do they actually like it or what is it you know i don't think anyone cares about that like yeah. I, I i do it for me i like it and i don't really think it changes how people view you maybe in some places like a little bit but again if you if you live a rounded life i don't think those things matter but like yeah as long as you like it, it's cool, you know. I think you can be in weird shit and, and that's going to be fine. You don't have to do something that's cl cliche and nice. But, but you know, if you want to learn fighting, then there are a few things you can do. And, and just ask me and I'll kind of give you my opinion. Let's let it at that, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I think that's it. Let's wrap up. Uh, thank you for doing this. This has been a very valuable conversation, and I think maybe one day we'll, we'll, we could do something about the dirtiest stuff we've done to women and, and, and yeah. kind of to talk about the dark side of, of, of the dating world. I, I've started to talk about it. We'll do that. Okay, dude, thank you very much. Thanks. And I'll talk to you soon. Ciao.
That's it for this time. If you want to ask any questions about this podcast episode to me or Mr. Majestic, you can do so in our private community. The link to join it is in the description below. That's it. See you next time. Ciao, guys.